Welcome back everyone, it is Ryan with the Idaho Crypto Group here and today is the very first episode of our new series called The Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Cryptocurrency where in this series we're gonna go over all things cryptocurrency from what is cryptocurrency, how does it work, how do I set up a wallet, how do I get on an exchange, how do I make orders, how do I send Bitcoin to someone, we're gonna go over all of those things in this series. Now, this series is geared towards those who are brand new to cryptocurrency and really don't know anything about it. Now, that's not to say that someone who's advanced in cryptocurrency might not pick some things up from this series, but it's just a heads up. Now, as we go throughout this series, please keep in mind that at Idaho Crypto Group, we are not financial advisors. We are simply crypto nerds, I guess. <laughs> we, we, we've been doing crypto for a long time, my partner Jesse and I, and we've made it our goal to educate others and help them get into the market because a lot of times it's scary to get into crypto. It, you know, a, a lot of people are hesitant because of things that they've heard and there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of different wallets, exchanges, so things can get really confusing very quickly. So we've made it our goal to make cryptocurrency education easy, simple, and fun. So like I said, today's the first episode and we're gonna be learning what is cryptocurrency. Let's start with Bitcoin. You may have heard about it on the news or maybe you have a close friend or relative that just won't stop talking about their Bitcoin portfolio and how they have all of this online currency. And Bitcoin is exactly that. It's an online currency with no physical coin. However, just like a stock, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies fluctuate in value as they are traded and used to purchase goods and services. Now, when Bitcoin first came out, people didn't take it all that seriously. A large majority of people were extremely skeptical of this new online currency. At first, around 2009, 2010, Bitcoin wasn't really worth anything. People just sort of sent it back and forth online sort of for fun and for hobby purposes. In 2010, however, a man in Florida made the first real world Bitcoin transaction by buying two pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoin, an amount of Bitcoin that would have been worth over $500 million if he would have held on to it in today's current market prices. As time went on and Bitcoin began to be traded on more exchanges and more people found out about this new technology, the price continued to rise. In 2011, its price broke $1. And in 2013, its price broke over $1,000. And then in 2017, it reached nearly $20,000. Fast forward to today, year 2021, Bitcoin broke an all-time high and reached $56,000 this year. It's now seen a small correction is currently trading around $50,000 at the time of filming. But what exactly makes Bitcoin and crypto so valuable? Why do people want it? And why is everyone wanting to use it? So let's go back in time a bit. In 2008, the Bitcoin white paper was published under the pseudonym of Satoshi Nakamoto. The Bitcoin white paper was basically a nine page essay explaining and introducing this new technology, what it does, how it works and why we should use it. The Bitcoin white paper urged for individuals to switch to a new type of money transfer system, a better solution than the current system. The paper suggested an irrefutable deflationary peer to peer decentralized money transfer system. A lot of words there, but let's break each piece down, starting with that last piece, which many may argue is the most important. A peer-to-peer -peer decentralized money transfer system. Satoshi claimed that individuals would be able to send currencies without the use of a bank or large financial institution. Satoshi noted that there is a growing distrust in large financial institutions, and Bitcoin would solve this problem by allowing individuals to be able to send any amount of money from anywhere at any time. It is your money, in fact. For example, imagine going into your bank on a Sunday afternoon to try to send a million dollars across the globe. Well, first of all, your bank's probably closed on Sunday. Second, if they were open and you tried to send that money across the globe, they're gonna charge you thousands of dollars in fees. And third, the transaction is gonna take a long time, one to five business days for your recipient to receive their funds. Cryptocurrency solves this problem with lightning fast transactions and unbelievably low fees. This also gives more power to the people as again, they're able to control their own money, send it to whomever they want, whenever they want, without the use of a large financial institution. Another key point about Bitcoin is that it's irrefutable, meaning that it can't be changed or modified. Bitcoin and all other cryptocurrencies run on something called blockchain technology, which is a very complex topic that we will discuss in depth in future videos. In short, the blockchain is a cryptographically secured chain of digital blocks that store information on coins and transactions. All transaction records are stored on the blockchain. These transactions are confirmed and recorded by millions of decentralized mines and nodes throughout the globe, which is also a topic we'll make future videos on. The point you need to understand is that because the ledger is updated by a globally decentralized network of computers, there is no central authority, transactions cannot be faked, coins cannot be duplicated, and a common problem known as double spending 
cannot happen. The decentralized network of computers and minds act as a security measure that no one person has too much power to where they can fake a transaction or duplicate coins or or control everything, right? All computers are all doing confirmations and, and, and double checking their records back and forth with each other to make sure that everything lines up. This brings us to our third point, the deflationary aspect, which only applies to certain coins depending on the way their code was written. The code for Bitcoin, for example, was written to manage the supply of Bitcoin in a very specific long-term minded way. In the very beginning, Satoshi created only 21 million Bitcoin to ever exist, which were all locked at the start. In order for a Bitcoin to be unlocked, it must be mined, which we'll make future videos on. But in short, the point you need to understand about mining is that each Bitcoin in the very beginning was locked and they're locked by a very complex mathematical algorithm called the SHA-256 algorithm. Now, in order for a Bitcoin to be unlocked and put into circulation, that math problem must be solved. Bitcoin mines are essentially supercomputers that are trying random solutions to this problem until it solves the equation. Once the equation is solved, that Bitcoin is unlocked and paid out to the miners. So throughout time, mining has grown in popularity and there are massive operations throughout the world, warehouses of supercomputers that are just mining all day long. These mines are also the same computers and nodes previously mentioned that are constantly verifying and confirming blockchain transactions. Like I said, 21 million coins at the beginning were locked. However, as time has gone on, more mines have been built and crypto has grown in popularity. Over 18.6 million Bitcoin have been unlocked, leaving less than 3 million to be unlocked ever. Now, Satoshi recognized a global inflation and mass currency production problem and created Bitcoin to be specifically deflationary. He did this by coding Bitcoin so that every four years, the amount of Bitcoin unlocked when a mine solves the SHA-256 equation splits in half, making Bitcoin twice as hard to earn every four years. And obviously there's a lot of factors that could go into this estimate, such as computer power and the progression of technology over time. But many people estimate that the last Bitcoin won't actually be mined until between the years 2100 to 2200, quite a ways away. So that brings us to today, year 2021, where one Bitcoin is worth over 50,000 US dollars. A lot of large financial institutions like Grayscale and Tesla have began investing into Bitcoin. You see that a lot of car dealerships, restaurants, and even stores are accepting cryptocurrency for payment. So that leaves you with the question now, is it going to keep going up? Is it all going to crash tomorrow? And unfortunately, I don't have the answer for you. But what I do know is that this technology is only at the beginning of its life. This industry is constantly growing in efficiency, speed, and quality. But as you dive into the world of cryptocurrency, just remember to be careful. Remember that it is new. And because it's a new technology, there's a lot of people that are unfortunately taking advantage of those who are uneducated on the topic. Always remember to do your own research. Don't share your passwords with anyone and don't invest what you can't afford to lose. And here at Idaho Crypto Group, we've made it our goal to make this teaching and education process simple since at the start, there's a lot of scary stuff out there and it seems very, very daunting. And sometimes there's a lot of barriers to entry and that's what we're here to help you with. So again, guys, today we went over what is Bitcoin. The three key points you need to remember is that it's a deflationary currency. It is irrefutable, meaning that transactions can't be fake, double spends can't happen, and coins can't be duplicated. You also need to remember that it's a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized system. We are taking out the middleman of financial transactions and taking control of our own money. That wraps up episode one. If you liked, please make sure to drop a like on the video, leave a comment if you have any questions, and subscribe so you can catch our future videos. The next episode is gonna be teaching you how to set up a cryptocurrency wallet. So thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you next time.